a document called The Role of Critical Minerals in the Transitions to Clean Energy, and which I recommend you to read. Holds the demand for minerals in the use of technologies to meet climate objectives is going to multiply at least by four in the year 2040. If we look, for example, at the first of them, lithium, which is one of the most relevant minerals for the energy transition due to its great usefulness in the manufacturing of batteries, today more than 95% of the world production of this metal is concentrated in four countries, Australia, China, Chile, and Argentina. This process is increasingly complex given the increasing globalization of energy values, markets, and the interrelation of countries' economy. Therefore, the first message I would like to convey is that we need a more a common geopolitical approach within the European Union, not only to address such supply problems, but only to ensure a sustainable energy transition, for example, through green mining or what we can call mining 4.0. My second conclusion for this session is that since the production of minerals relevant to the energy transition is even more geographically concentrated, if possible, than that of fossil resources, we therefore need a common national strategy to maximize the self-sufficiency of raw materials critical for this transition. And of course, we need to create a space for collaboration with our colleagues from other autonomous communities and also from other countries. Currently, our national production of raw materials is not enough to satisfy current needs, nor will it be for future ones. Dependence on imports is still very high, especially when it comes to the energy transition. Therefore, we have to carefully design the future scenarios of sustainable supply and demand in our country and the European Union. But before getting into the topic of sustainable mining, I would like to highlight the importance of the circular economy. I believe that we have to look beyond the current extractive industrial model and to turn to the three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle, into the main axis of our policy. It is true that our economic activity is closely related to the consumption of resources, but this linear economy has to change. We must transform all elements of the take, do, and discard system. In other words, how we manage resources, how we manufacture products, and how we use products, and what we do next with the materials. Only then will it make sense to think about sustainable mining. The circular economy should be at the top of the political agenda, as it is also a source of opportunities. It constitutes economic growth associated with resource efficiency and industrial transformation, along with new business and service models, ultimately resulting in a greater number of a green job. However, we must also be realistic, as the current circular economy is not enough to satisfy the demand associated with this new energy paradigm, which means that in one way or another, we we need and will continue to need a solid extractive industry. And that's where my third reflection today comes from. In this sense, in the current context of an ecological transition, our first objective must be to ensure that the structure of this raw materials industry is sustainable. For this, we must, first of all, carefully update our legislative framework on mining management to adapt it to the current situation. We must better integrate mineral resources into regional planning as a top priority. We must fully guarantee the protection of the environment in mining activities. And we must promote good practices for the prevention of environmental impacts, for the protection of biodiversity, and for the recovery of degraded lands. Lastly, Improving public awareness is critical. Oh, dialogue, uh, transparency, public participation, and social responsibility are vital. Raw materials have enormous potential in this transition in which we are immersed, and we need them. We're going to convince society that we can also use them to create jobs and grow the economy. We have to communicate better, level up, and make this industry of mineral raw materials more efficient and sustainable which we also want which we also want. For our part, a strategy of the general administration of the state to promote the sustainable development of the mining industry appears in two cross-cutting strategic documents and a future specific roadmap for the sustainable management of mineral raw materials. In the first place, the PNIEC, the National Integrated Energy and Climate Plan, and secondly, a long-term strategy with two main pillars uh, towards a climate neutrality in 2050. 
Both documents include a broad perspective with joint objectives and of policies uh, and measures necessary to advance this transition, but they also include cross-cutting elements that are very important in this journey, such as uh, mineral raw materials. The uh, National Integrated Energy and Climate Plan already takes into account that our industrial policy is going to be um, impacted, without a doubt, as I was saying, by these new demand profiles for raw materials. This has to mean an important change in the energy and economic model. And the uh, long-term Spanish coordinated strategy also establishes four orientations that should guide the national policy in relation to raw materials. First of all, as I have been uh, saying, efficiency in the circular economy. Secondly, consolidating the sustainable mining management. In the third place, guaranteeing the security of supply and compliance with environmental and social justice requirements for mineral raw materials that come from different countries. And fourthly, the, to promote the strategic role of minerals in industry, in the energy transition, and in market transparency. Ooh, taking into account all these elements, as I mentioned before, we're preparing a national roadmap for the sustainable management of mineral raw materials. We're working intensively in this document in the hope that we have a first draft for public hearing in coming months. At the end of last year, while preparing this roadmap, we launched a public consultation with a broad participation of stakeholders, including civil society, citizens, public administrations, and companies. And uh, we received many contributions uh, that we took into account to prepare the roadmap. Our ultimate goal is to create a reliable and stable framework that enables and encourages investments to promote innovation and uh, environmental, social, and governance standards and contribute to the energy transition. And at the same time, I'm con convinced that we can uh, foster economic growth and uh, green jobs. Thanks again for the invitation to share this presentation. My congratulations to our colleagues of the Andalusian government and the OECD, with whom uh, we have also had the opportunity to work together this year to contribute and to, and I remain uh, ready to address your queries or clarification. Thank you. Great, thank you, Daniel. I think for, for us and for Andalusia, it's sure that the, 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 the role of the national government is very important in this, in this transition, and we are glad also that you are with us. Uh, just, I see that some people just joined, so um, just to give them an update, we are having this event uh, uh, in parallel. Some people are in the region of Andalusia, in the port of Huelva. Uh, Manuel, it would be nice that at some point we can see a bit the public to, to see them. Uh, we have online 98 people uh, connected. We hope that we, 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 we reach 100 people. Let's see. Uh, for those that want to participate, well, most of you, some of you are from the OECD Mining Network, so please send your questions through the chat, send your comments, and we are going to try to answer along the, the meeting. Now we have the last, uh, the closing remarks of, the, of this first uh, uh, session. We have Rogelio Velasco Perez, a Regional Minister for Economic Transformation, Industry, Knowledge, and Universities from the Government of Andalusia, Spain. Uh, Rogelio is with us uh, on site, so please, Rogelio, the floor is yours. To be very, very brief, to start my greetings to all high officials in the audience, including deputies, senators, councillors, senior officials from both the central and regional administrations, to my friends Javier, Rafa, and especially Pilar Miranda, the president of the port, who organized this event. Every time I come to Huelva and the port, everything is perfectly organized, thanks to her. And of course, the OECD that has been the best service of economic and other studies in the world. And thanks to them for including Andalusia as a case study in their mineral regions and cities project that has been underway for a long time. I'm going to quickly highlight, above all, what, according to the study, stands out as the special advantages of Andalusia as a mining region. 
In the first place, its infrastructure, which facilitates transport reliably and quickly, and its telecommunications, electricity, water, and other infrastructure. Secondly, the geographical position. We are very close to Africa and facing Latin America. The southern cone countries are potential markets that can be developed more. And thirdly, Andalusia, and especially Western Andalusia, is mining friendly. It has a very strong old tradition that's been passed down from one generation to the next. Today we have a young population that is willing to work in mining. The report also emphasizes things that need to be reinforced and on which this government has already been working. First of all, innovation. The report indicates that it's necessary to foster innovation along the mining value chain. This is precisely why we're going to give it a new impetus through the smart specialization strategy for the uh, sustainability of Andalusia from 2021 to 2027. A second issue to which the OECD also draws attention is improving local SMEs. A large proportion of SMEs and entrepreneurs work in low-value added activities. The regional government and the Junta de Andalusia have been developing different programs to support innovation and contribute to this improvement. Third, we need to enhance the skills of our workforce. An example is the recently created master's program in mining engineering set up between the universities of Huelva, Córdoba, and Jaén. We need to follow this example to create synergies. And fourthly, ours is a complex administrative process. At the regional level, although also at the state level, we're working in two areas. First, the simplification and streamlining of procedures with an impact on mining activity and adapting basic state regulations to our own regulations together with the competent or pertinent ministries of a central government. To conclude, I would also like to underscore a document that will be key for mining in this region. This is the Andalusian Sustainable Mining Strategy 2030, which, as this OECD case study mentions, will provide a unique opportunity to strengthen the mining value chain. The government will start work to prepare the strategy in just a few days. I want to hear, uh, seize the opportunity to encourage you to participate so that this instrument has the maximum representation and consensus. Projects of this type that advocate for sustainable mining are those that we have presented to the Next Generation Fund for over 3 billion euros. We're persuaded that innovation, circular economy, resource efficiency, renewable energies, electromobility, and digitization are key to the development of the ecological and digital transformation of the whole of Europe. Thank you. Y digital de toda Europa. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Minister Rogelio. Now we, I think we finished the, 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 the panel. So now we are going to pass to a move to, to the presentation of the main findings and recommendations of this uh, case study. Uh, we're going to try to do this. Uh, straight to the point and and again if you have some questions please send them send them in through the through through message before before to start this is we are very pleased with this uh, report has been a, a a long way we started in 2018 uh, was with the support of the of the government of andalusia especially with the um, secretary of industry and mines uh, the case study aim to assist the region with the recommendations and policy advices mainly into fronts, uh, not only, but mainly uh, in the elaboration of the new mining strategy that, that, we, are, that we, he we heard just from the regional ministry, and uh, the maximization of the benefits from this activity to attain a sustainable regional development. 
uh, we conducted uh, last year more than 10 days of interviews. Uh, so we thank also the academics, the policymakers and, and private sector uh, actors that, that joined these interviews and gave us the, their inputs. We have uh, some internal, international experts uh, from Ireo, from other regions of Spain, Chile and Canada that also gave us uh, uh, inputs. And as you know, this, this kind of uh, OECD case studies always have um, a peer reviewer that is a, like a, a person that guides us through the process. In this case, we have the former uh, Vice Minister of Mines from Argentina, Juan Bisset, who is gonna give some, some words after my presentation. So just to the point, uh, I think is a, as Nadine mentioned, uh, this is a special case for, for a mining region because Andalusia per se is not a well-known globally uh, 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 by its mining uh, uh, activities. Uh, the region is more known by, uh, by tourism, by culture, by, by their agriculture uh, uh, amenities. But the region, in fact, uh, is the second largest producer of, of mining in Spain. Uh, uh, almost 40% 40, 40 of the production in, in Spain come from this region, uh, mainly copper, uh, lead, zinc, silver, and, and, a, and a number of non-metallic uh, minerals. Uh, the region also employs 25% of the, of the people working in, in mining and has, has extensive network of, of mines, or more than 460 mines uh, that are present. And as we see, that will be important for this transition because as we were talking, we, we now we talk a lot about waste mining. And these old mines represent an asset that is very valuable. Uh, the region is set in the, in, in the Iberian Pirate Belt, that is an international asset. And as you see in this map, it's quite diverse. Uh, we have two marked subsectors, uh, one the metallic mining uh, in red, mostly around Huelva and Seville, and a number of non-metallic minerals, uh, ornamental ro rocks like marble, industrial minerals, and, and also aggregates, uh, limestone, and, and, and other products that are quite relevant for, for local identity, for local uh, economy of some municipalities, and, and, and that they produce uh, employment in different regions. This, this, this sector, this sector, is mainly uh, made of small, small businesses. The average employees, of this uh, sector is seven employees per, per establishment. So we have a, a challenge here, but also an opportunity because the sector can create a green transition also in other connected sectors, no? like construction, uh, industry, and so on. The Andalusia, this, this potential comes in a, in a context that is uh, uh, highly uh, interesting for, for, for minerals. Uh, we have experiencing a, a increasing demand, global demand for sustainable raw materials. We have the case for uh, critical, the so-called critical raw materials like lithium, cobalt, that are uh, highly demand for energy storage. But as you see in this graph, uh, that is, that there, are, there are some um, uh, models, for example, this model that, that we present here, uh, that foresee an increase in the demand of also some uh, metallic minerals. Eh, we expect that esperamos que eh, hacia el de, de, de global climate goals eh, some minerals the demand will increase more than 200% and we have copper here that is eh, an important mineral for, for the region but also in particular in, in, in Europe this region experiences uh, an interesting environment because Europe has set eh, as a strategic security question, the access to raw materials in its uh, European Green Deal uh, strategy uh, that aims to become uh, climate neutral by 2050. We have someone with, from the European Commission here that will explain later this, these characteristics. But for the industries also, the, the new European industrial uh, strategy uh, sets uh, as important goal the autonomy on access to raw materials uh, to improve the economic resilience. I want to highlight this phrase that, I, that we found very interesting on this strategy that says, the transition to climate neutrality could replace today's reliance on fossil fuels with one on raw materials. And for Andalusia, this is not a question only of uh, meeting environmental goals. 
this a question, this opportunity also to attain a green recovery. I think I hear some background noise. This if uh, the back office can help us a bit. Um, uh, and a green recovery, why? Because Andalusia has has carried a structural gap with the with the with the national average in income and employment. Uh, while the region is the the most largest, the largest region in terms of population in Spain, uh, its GDP per capita is one of is the tower is the third lowest in the uh, across some regions, and and and, and the employment is and the unemployment rates are also important. This is what well, we'll see mainly uh, due to a, a high specialization of, on low value added activities linked to services and 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 the high reliance of, of around tourism. But we have seen that in the past, mining was a, a, a particularly important for, for the recovery uh, of some crisis. And, and we see the crisis of 2008. Uh, we see how mining in this figure and in your right uh, was one of the engines to, to, to promote uh, uh, employment. And in fact, the employment grew most than relatively than other sectors after the 2008 crisis, mainly due to... Mm, estable con relación a otro. But to leverage this, this, uh, this potential, uh, the, the, the region needs to mobilize some competitive advantage, some strengths, and also address some uh, bottlenecks. As the, as the regional minister mentioned, the region has a lot of interesting uh, assets, uh, a younger population than, than, than the country and the OECD benchmark. Uh, we see that it's an a, a important asset in today's uh, aging uh, uh, world an attractive geology and an strategic geographic location close to Africa and culturally close to, close to uh, Latin America. Metallic and non-metallic uh, uh, sectors with important mining uh, providers. A good infrastructure uh, and proximity to urban centers. This, this is particular for a, for a mining region because mining regions tend to be remote and, 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 and suffer from access to uh, quality hospital, uh, airports, uh, amenities. In this case, this provides an important opportunity to make attractive this, this sector um, for workers and for firms too. Uh, mining identity is important as we see, especially in non-metallic sector, we have some municipalities that are rooted with the metallic, uh, with the mining history and that can foster some community support for new uh, projects. In challenges, uh, the, the minister also, also mentioned, low levels of innovation, in fact, the innovation index is half uh, the average uh, of the European countries. And we see that especially some uh, key aspects of uh, private innovation are, a bit, are, are lacking behind. Innovation in public sector is, is, the, is the highest in this ranking. A large, a large share of SMEs and entrepreneurs in low value added activities, uh, as I mentioned before. Relatively low education attainment, especially tertiary education, and low coverage of quality broadband. We talk here about really uh, improving the speed uh, uh, connection to internet. That is a game changer for for the to for the future. Outdated and complex administrative processes uh, that that, as we say, well, rely in in an old uh, national regulation, and a lack of a national coordination on mining on raw materials. Uh, the, the, the deputy director, the Daniel, he mentioned that they are doing some steps on this direction, and, and we hope that that this roadmap for for raw materials uh, uh, goes in, in, in the in the in the right way, and we are sure that this is going to happen. Some recommendations for the CD, just looking at the time. So the CD in, in this study uh, identifies four groups of recommendations. In total, are fifteen actions uh, that. That, that we think can, can help Andalusia to become this front runner that the European uh, Union needs on green technologies and circular process, and also an engine for, for to create uh, high value added jobs. The first set of recommendations is mobilizing the, the strengths that Andalusia has. We talk here about uh, improving the access to the, the, the geological information, especially mapping this critical raw materials, the waste mining that other countries are already doing so. Uh, we have some experience from our colleagues from Sweden that probably are connected here. Uh, improving the, li the links with the African and Latin American mining jurisdiction companies and, and regions. 
this, this the acid that is the proximity to urban centers can have also a, a, a negative effect. So it's important to integrate well the urban and infrastructure planning with the, mi the mining uh, development planning. And finally, something that, uh, that we highlight in the, in, the, in the case study, the local mining identity uh, is, a, is an asset to help create a, di a dialogue between these municipalities that are pro-mining that see the benefits with other um, actors uh, and, and other interest groups. And we have in the report highlighted a, a, a case of Chile that does this kind, this kind of dialogues that can be very interested for, interesting for the, for the region. Another group of, of uh, recommendations is about challenges. Uh, we talk already about innovation. There are different um, recommendations here. Upscaling the SMEs uh, and improving the mining regulatory framework. I'm going to try to do a focus on, on the innovation and, and the mining regulatory framework. The third set, the third group of recommendations is for them, our friends of the national government, is improving this coordination at the national level is developing uh, the national strategy to create these synergies between the, the different uh, mining regions. And an important player here is the, the Geological and Mine uh, Institute of, of Mining. We think that he can play with a, a stronger financial capacity or institutional capacity, an important role, especially in research and in, in synergies of innovation. And we have this final group of, of recommendations that is that they are about the the new, the new mining strategy. So the idea is to make this mining strategy not only a paper, but really a tool that can mobilize different uh, links in, in the region. I, I want to highlight the, the two last recommendations that are unlocking synergies with other uh, economic activities. We have Andalusia also an important renewable energy sector, uh, uh, a growing uh, aerospatial also activity. And all these sectors can have important synergies with mining and also the collaboration with the, their partners of, of Portugal, that they share the same uh, geological formation and, and with other uh, regions in Spain. Uh, if I have one minute, probably I can focus on the innovation that is quite of, of the highlights of the report. Um, for the innovation, we, we identified main three actions. One is improving the skills uh, with the training programs, uh, on specifically knowledge intensive, intensive and environmental sustainable uh, activities. We highlight all good, good practices from other regions of, of our network, uh, promoting service innovation uh, in, the value, in the mining value chain. In right now, the game is not only destruction, but is the services around this, this industry. So improving this, this ecosystem of service providers is important and the creation of a test bed uh, to experiment with projects, especially with the circular processes. Australia has some examples of these. We also highlighted that could be a, a good idea to explore. And the educational, the link with educational institution, that is the last part that is crucial. Uh, uh, academia has been a bit, uh, a bit outside, looking the picture from a bit outside. I think it's ideal if they really join this, this process, uh, partnerships with universities and, and academia and, and industries and, and a platform to facilitate uh, uh, R&D. Uh, I think I don't have time to, to, to focus on the, on the framework, on the regulatory framework. There are some recommendations that establishing a formal co coordination mechanism uh, to deal and to make the process of mining uh, permits faster. Some regions use a one-stop shop. Andalusia has in-house one, one, one tool, that institutional tool that can, that can help. Uh, and the work of the national government that I, I already said uh, before. Uh, other focus on some recommendations for to unlock the synergies and, and boost the collaboration with other, other regions. Uh, you can find this in the report and I'm happy to extend this if we have time during Q&A. Um, thank you, and um, Fernando, I will give you the floor, and we start with the panel. Yes, thank you, Andres. Well, first we will hear some remarks from the peer reviewer of the report that um, has been accompanying with us during this process. So, well, you already introduced him, but let me do this again. Uh, he's been a key contributor to the, to the report. Uh, Juan Bisset is the former Vice Minister of Mining of Argentina. And he has participated as an external peer reviewer. And given the, the, his previous experience and the key inputs uh, he gave us, 
it will be very interesting to, to hear his remarks. So Juan, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Fernando. Eh, buenas tardes a todo el mundo. Este, I will switch to English in the benefit of, of our international participants. I would like to thank, uh, to begin with, the uh, national and regional governments of Spain and Andalusia, um, the mining sector in Andalusia, which was uh, very open in the discussions, and especially the OECD, the Center for Entrepreneurship, SMEs, Regions and Cities, and the Mining uh, regions and cities initiative, um, which they took and, and carried forward a very challenging process in challenging circumstances. So congrats on that uh, to everyone. It was uh, very interesting, very enriching. Um, and I would like to highlight just a few things from my vantage point as an external peer reviewer. Um, most has already been said, so I will not uh, dwell on items uh, that have been discussed, but um, what I would like to say is that uh, this report highlights something that's uh, absolutely key in, in my Son view. clave desde mi punto de vista Andalucía y España. Eh... Of a one in a generation opportunity. You are about to become a key player in a key sector that's been overlooked for, for some time to a certain extent, but it's uh, due to come to the forefront of events in, in years to come. And that is the sustainably uh, procurement of raw materials, especially mineral raw materials. Um, everything is aligned for you to take this center stage. Uh, the world um, has already um, learned the hard lessons of um, depending on um, very extended supply chains um, critical raw materials have been identified for some time now, but they have become more critical now. The energy transition that we all know about uh, is here and, uh, and uh, demands an increasing number of um, new projects. And um, a lot of this sort of falls on the lap of a region that has and brings to the table some key advantages that, in my experience, um, are very hard to find elsewhere in the world you do not find uh, usually uh, a region that is mining friendly as Andalusia is, that has the rich history that Andalusia has. Amigable con la minería, como demuestra la rica historia de Andalusia, que es una especie de, que opera en una especie de eh, entorno. Not the case of mining elsewhere. Um, you have all of that in place. And uh, that means that you can become um, a key player, not just for the EU, but also worldwide in this new world of sustainably mined minerals. Um, there's things are need to be done. The report highlights them. Um, they are already being done. And I think that this very case studies is a case on point on what's, uh, what's being done. I would encourage uh, the both levels of government to coordinate their work better and, uh, and as much as possible and to sort of focus on very simple things that need to be done, in my view. Uh, mining is a long-term game. It needs long-term rules that are simple, that are, that are you know, clearly set out and do not change. And this needs uh, the decided uh, input of uh, the national and the, and the regional government. And of course, the input of all of the stakeholders. Um, I would also perhaps finish my, my, my few remarks with um, sort of the encouragement, the congratulations, but also the encouragement uh, to keep going down this pathway because it's not just a great opportunity that Andalusia has to sort of step up to sort of a, a strategic um, um, position within Europe uh, and within the world as a key provider of, of these minerals. Uh, it's not just the fact that this opportunity also brings with it all of its attendant um, um, advantages of mining as a, as a motor, as, as, a, as an engine of development, but it's also a duty. Uh, we will need all of the minerals that we can get sustainably mined and sourced uh, if we're going to make the, the energy transition. Um, 
Andalusia and Spain have a role to play. I will encourage you to do so. And uh, I will be cheering on the sidelines uh, all the way. And um, finally, I would like to say that um, it is, um, it's been an honor to participate in this process with all of you. And I hope that uh, in years to come, Andalusia does take its place in the, in the world stage of mining uh, leaders. Thank you very much. Thank you, Juan. It has been a pleasure for, for us as well. Um, now we go back to the Port of Huelva. Uh, we invite uh, Manuel Vázquez, uh, who is the senior advisor in mining in the government of Andalusia. And he has been the lead coordinator of the OECD project in Andalusia, serving as a valuable bridge between the OECD and, and, the jun and la Junta. And now we'd like to hear from, from him, his comments on the case study. Please, Manuel. en nombre de la Secretaría General de Industria y Mina de la Junta de Andalucía y de su responsable que será el General Secretariat. I would like to thank the uh, work that has been uh, put on this effort and the uh, outcomes. This is uh, certainly a project that, that has involved over 30 uh, regional and uh, national actors. Escucho un poquito como con un un ruido, no sé si te puedes acercar más al micrófono o Come on, beep. Is that better? As I mentioned, I want to thank the members of the Metallic Minerals Aggregate Cement Industrial and Metal Stone Mining Industries from the region for participating as well, as well as representatives from the University of Huelva, Seville, and the International University of Andalusia. On the state side, the officials from the Geological Mining Institute, the General Subdirector for Mining, and the General Subdirectorate for Environmental Quality. Other bodies of the Junta de Andalusia have also participated, such as the General Directorate for Territory and Urban Planning and the General Directorate for Environmental Quality and Climate Change. Finally, experts from different areas have also participated in this project. All these institutions have been represented by renowned experts in different fields relevant for the development of the mining sector. Our thanks to all those who have contributed. Beyond the conclusions and recommendations of the study that have been pointed out by the previous uh, speakers, I would like to refer a little more to the origin of this study undertaken at the OECD Initiative on Mining Regions and Cities, which the Junta de Andalusia closed to June in 2017 through the uh, then General Director Natalia Gonzalez and which opened the opportunity to carry out this present study on the mining sector in the region, like other mining regions of OECD countries, such as Norland in Sweden, Campo in Finland, and more recently, Pilbara in Australia. We realized that Andalusia had joined the study because of our potential present and also for our mining past. The uh, decision was formalized by the uh, present uh, government, first through the Ministry of Finance and by the Ministry of Economic Transformation at present. For this administration, for those responsible and also for government officials related to the mining sector, it's been a unique opportunity to share an analysis of the uh, mining industry and the proposals for action from a leading international body such as OECD that has trusted our potential to promote and adopt international standards in Andalusian mining. Initiatives include removing or reducing bottlenecks uh, that uh, prevent or slow down the development, integration, and promotion of innovation, education, and training of our current and future workers, adopting sustainability criteria, an approach to integrated action in the ecological transition and digitization, the circular economy, or the integration of the social aspect are some of the keys to this study. It is very important in present society to involve local communities in projects that intervene and impact the territories through the social license to operate. Therefore, the presence and participation of mayors in these actions is uh, important. 
the conclusions and recommendations of the study, as well as the identification of concrete actions to development, is an incentive for its consideration in next instruments of mining policy, such as the Sustainable Mining Strategy of Andalusia 2030, also in the next regulatory reforms that may take place, or even, hopefully, in the next plans for the incorporation of a personnel into public administration. The potential of our companies and auxiliary industries to export their experience, knowledge, and quality worldwide or the great possibilities that Andalusia has to, due to its position at the border of between Europe and Africa, a continent with incalculable mining possibilities, or thanks to historical, even effective links with Latin America, are some of the options to be explored and fostered in coming years. Finally, I wanted to highlight three issues that I consider key. The first one is the company's commitments to Andalusian mining to build a first-rate mining industry and transformative projects such as Las Cruces, Adelaide, or Matza that have not hesitated to adopt some of the recommendations included in this study and, as an example, innovations worth highlighting such as revolutionary mining treatment processes in the pirate belt that were previously unattainable, but that currently offer the possibility of attaining metals thanks to innovative treatments. I must mention future projects and that result from the high interest of investing in mining in a region, as is the case of Grupo Mexico that recently started Los Frailes project, the Minas del Quife, the future Adelaide project in Massa Valverde, and also prospecting in uh, bitarsic mining, among many other exploration projects that are underway on critical raw materials such as copper, zinc, tungsten, or cobalt, which will surely contribute to expand Andalusia's uh, mining. The second issue is the increase and improvement of the value chain for the use of Andalusian minerals in the region itself, which uh, grows our industry and labor force, creating economically and socially high quality employment. These efforts are aligned with the criteria of resource efficiency and recycling of waste required by the circular economy and concerned critical raw materials that have a direct impact on attaining the objectives of the Green Deal and the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations for the ecological transition. Third and last, the need to connect our delusion knowledge system, universities, technology centers, innovative companies, and knowledge generators with the business world and the need for innovation in projects that take advantage of our minerals value chain. This value chain includes prospecting, transformation, and incorporation into the manufacturing industry, such as manufacturers of equipment, components, metalworking, aerospace, agrobiology, etc. This is an Achilles heel that we must address with initiatives and aided by the new S4 Smart Specialization Strategy. This is it, and thank you very much. Thanks, Manuel. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Manuel. Manuel. So, uh, as was commented by Manuel and also by my colleague earlier, the coordination between all the actors uh, at the national, regional, and local level is, is essential to mobilize the, the full potential of the region. So this is why we move to the, to the panel discussion now. And we have local representatives from the metallic mining, also from the non-metallic mining sector, as well as academics specialized in mining. So, so far we've seen the, the recommendations and what the regional government thinks about them. But now we want to hear about the local actors. We want them to talk about the mining business ecosystem, about innovation, and basically how to make this happen. So the first question to the panelists is about uh, what recommendations are for them the most relevant and in the context of COVID-19, uh, how can be the mining sector a relevant, um, uh, play a, a relevant role for the post-COVID-19 recovery? And as a second question um, or third, uh, what, uh, what do they think that the, the institutional company can help to implement these recommendations? So to start the discussion, uh, I would like to give the floor to Pristila Moreno. She's the manager of the Association of Mining Metallurgical Companies, AMINER. So uh, Pristila, you have the next uh, five minutes and the floor is yours. Please. I don't know if... Thank you, Pristila. Okay. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Councillor, President of the Board, uh, Deputy Secretary of State, and dear authorities and friends. On behalf of Aminer, our most sincere thanks to the entire OECD team, to all the people from the General Secretariat of Industry and Mines, Cristobal Sanchez, Manuel Vasquez, Angel Andres, Carmen Alvarez. Likewise, we add special thanks to Juan Bizet, Vice Minister for Mining of Argentina, for accompanying the team in the development of the review and collaborating with the valuable contributions in its drafting. And of course, to the rest of the collaborators in the business field who have contributed their vision and part of the raw material for the document. I have to say that to answer the question, we review some, uh, we should review some conclusions reached in it. It is a true that the objective is to make metal mining definitely a top level magnet economic activity in our region and to be considered and perceived by the administration and the public as an industrial benchmark. Indeed, Andalusia is a region that can and should take advantage of the growing world and European Union demand for mineral raw materials. Andalusia is the largest mining product in Spain and the second largest copper producer in the European Union. In the document, there is a section entitled An Ecosystem of Low Innovation, where it is said that innovation in Andalusia is mainly driven by public spending and that the mining provinces of Andalusia would require radical change in existing capacities. Regarding Andalusian mining, it should be uh, said that the director has been incorporating new, more sustainable and efficient processes for many years, respectful of natural resources and the environment in line with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. The metallurgical mining sector in Andalusia is committed to the continuous improvement of its processes, efficient water consumption, responsible production methods, minimizing the environmental carbon and water footprints, and the conservation and protection of biodiversity and ecosystems, as well as the circular economy and, of course, security, are the uh, priorities of the companies. The companies make very high investments with their own resources in research, in new viable and sustainable solutions for mineral processing and uh, treatment, even cleaner technologies capable of recovering metals while being at the global technological forefront. I want to underscore that. Worldwide, the mining that takes place in Andalusia is a mining of the 21st century. It is responsible mining. In addition, convinced of the need to generate added value to society through involvement in social and local actions, beyond the operation itself. A mining company that is involved in the fight against depopulation in rural areas, which also promotes with its own resources the training of its technical personnel in the absence of a regulated professional training by the administration, business diversification in the territory and the quality job creation. Our region is endowed with a great companies at all stages of the metal mining value chain including metallurgy and mineralogy, from extraction to services and processing. I put myself at the disposal of the entire OECD team, really, to bring them each and every one of the technological innovations introduced by companies leading innovation on world scale. For the rest, we are in agreement with the analysis provided by the document. With regard to the second question, how can the mining sector be relevant for the post-COVID recovery? It is uh, a case in point is it in this time when it seems that we're beginning to glimpse a way out of the deep economic crisis that has accompanied the COVID pandemic. It is time to reflect on the future of our land. Science and innovation have shown that the joint commitment of everyone, professionals, companies, institutions, and the state will be the best option for recovery. The challenges are enormous, and only with the support of governments, innovation, and investment will we be able to face the profound economic transformation we need. Uh, in order not to continue delving into the negative events of the last year, we must revalue the strength of a metal mining, which has demonstrated is essential to our industry and will be a leading player in the coming decades. The energy transition towards a decarbonized economy will only be possible thanks to metals.
If the European Union has set the year 2050 to achieve a climate neutrality, and in that transition, we will witness the exponential growth of the world's population, and in parallel, the growth of the electrification of cities and means of transport that will trigger the demand for key metals such as copper, zinc, silver, zinc, cobalt, and lithium, and other critical minerals. As an example, an electri electric car uses six times more minerals than a conventional vehicle. The OECD has appointed that the use of so-called critical ma raw materials will double, a focus that becomes a warning if we take into account the external dependence of the European Union for the supply of some raw materials for the industry, which ranges between 75 and 100 percent. Last September, the European Commission warned the supply of these fundamental raw materials may be at risk and could jeopardize the economy of the area, compromising the uh, strategic security of the member states. For this reason, it promoted the European alliance of raw materials to guarantee safe and sustainable supply, avoiding dependence on international markets dominated by China with 60% of imports and the United States with 30% and India as well. European production currently offers 10% of demand. The world needs metals and Andalusia can produce them. Without mining, the energy transition will not happen. Without a doubt, metal mining has a great future and Andalusia has to know how to take advantage of it. And finally, answering to the third question, the challenge seems obvious. Europe must produce more metals to meet the demand of the industry of the future. And in addition, it must be deliver a sustainable way that does not compromise natural resources, the environment and the future of the planet, as established by the SDGs. Well, Andalusia is ready to take on that challenge. 90% of the production of polymetallic sulfide in Spain comes from Andalusia. So we lead the domestic market with the production that has been transformed in recent years hand in hand with technology, innovation and research. In our land, mining is a safe, responsible and committed activity with the environment in which we operate. We have significantly advanced the efficiency and responsible use of raw materials, applying the latest advances in the extraction and exploitation of minerals with the aim that our activity is competitive and also sustainable. Despite the pandemic, uh, despite uh, the pandemic and uh, smaller world demand, we have a process 21 million above 3 billion euros. We're heading towards a promising future. The south of the Iberian Peninsula has a great geological wealth to explore, but according to experts, this potential is not enough to keep growing. The uh, trade uh, 2018 report holds that the investments for the development of the new mining projects not only require geological potential, but must be accompanied by favorable legislation with attractive regulatory standards to incentivize companies interested in our territory. This is one of our great demands to move towards a single governance of the sector with a legislative uh, framework that generates a trust and attracts investors. We must recognize the disposition of the Junta de Andalusia, which has known how to value that mining is a strategic productive sector and has opened the doors to permanent dialogue, committing itself to work together with the sector. A magnificent example of the companies by the companies of this constructive dialogue is the support received for the projects presented by Andalusian companies to the Next Generation Fund of the European Union, an ambitious mining and metallurgy project in the Beretic Belt, which will require an investment of more than 3 billion euros and will create 6,800 local jobs. But both the national and regional administration have to take new steps in this path and block projects, uh, streamline administrative procedures, and eliminate bureaucratic obstacles, strengthen with uh, more technological personnel because the development of the metal mining sector is built with the commitment of the institutions. The administrative complexity of the state and Andalusian government does not help a uh, mining project to succeed, take into account that it can take between seven and ten years approximately to be approved. That uh, delay does not help it. On the contrary, the interest of the investors is cooled down and um, uh, stops financial institutions uh, that deal with uh, long-term projects. 
if public institutions do not make the effort and support our sector, we have nothing to do. Mining needs stability and, of course, depoliticizing government functions and support. The European Union has uh, set funding priorities for post bid reconstruction, the transition to renewable energy, digitization, and the green economy, areas in which metals play a leading role. It is an opportunity for the sector that we must not miss because the future is now. Thank you. Thank you, Priscilla. Um, and thank you for these comments. Uh, I, yeah, I, I think they, in, in, in terms of innovation, well, the, the, the study highlights some of the innovations uh, that metallic uh, uh, companies uh, have conducted. Uh, I think the most, the, 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 the main recommendation here is about the innovation ecosystem. Mm, I think probably we can let uh, Jan see our, one of our experts of innovation talk later, but it's about these linkages between these foreign uh, companies that are working on metallic mining with the providers and with the non-metallic uh, mining companies. But, uh, but we, we take your, your, your feedback on this and, and thank you. Now we are going to introduce uh, and give the floor to Carlos Ramirez. Now we are here from the non-metallic part, uh, the general manager of the Association of Aggregates uh, Manufacturers of Andalusia. Please, Carlos. Uh, 